I got some new games. Oh, what a glorious day. Oh, get new games. The kids are you can win. Hey everybody, uh, Jim here for another uh, pickups video. Um, luckily, I have no work tomorrow, so tonight I'm enjoying a little bit of a uh, Kiden Ichiban. Uh, it's a really good beer, uh, which is odd for me. I typically prefer Asahi, which is brewed right here in Tokyo, but tonight I'm on this Kirin stuff, and it's really good. Um, uh, so again, for this video, basically. I've been hoarding up as many games as possible uh, before my inevitable inevitable move uh, back to the United States. Um, as is apparent by some pictures I've actually been sharing on Facebook. Uh, so with that being said, um, basically like just like the last couple of pickups vids, I'm just going to focus on kind of like a small portion of what I've been picking up lately so uh, let's check it out okay so I'm gonna start off with some soundtracks that I picked up recently um, at one heart off in particular uh, I just by chance went to the CD section and found that they had a whole section dedicated to video game music so I've got some pretty cool ones here um, all three of these uh, first three here are actually uh, music from East, uh, the East games. So this first one is called East uh, Perfect Collection 4 and it's only got uh, 11 tracks on it but it's all uh, good music from East 2. Um, these games all had really great music. They were on the PC Engine CD. Um, fantastic CD quality music in those games so it makes sense to put them on CD. Uh, this one is just simply called Music from Ancient East, the Final, Ancient East Vanished, the Final Chapter, so it's more music from East 2. Uh, this one has uh, 30 tracks on it, and then tracks 31 through 50 are actually just sound effects, and various sound effects from the game. Um, but so a really um, large soundtrack to East 2, pretty much every song from that game. And then this one is called Lilia from East, and this is actually a vocal album. Um, this young woman right here uh, singing any number of songs, how many? Uh, ten songs. Uh, ten songs from East. And uh, that's pretty cool as well. Again, really great music in those games. Uh, right here we have the soundtrack to Valis 2 which the game itself uh, is not that great, probably my least favorite Valis game but the music in all of them is really good again all those PC Engine CD games had great soundtracks so this is a, um, a 30 song soundtrack 
And this last one, not a game per se, it is a soundtrack for the Dragon Quest animated series. Um, and again, uh, really awesome. Some vocal tracks on here and then just some uh, regular orchestral music, things like that from the Dragon Quest television series. I've only seen a couple of episodes. I actually watched them on YouTube and they're pretty cool. But uh, some, some really awesome Dragon Quest for you there. And that's uh, five uh, video game soundtracks I picked up recently. Okay, so next up, I got a lot of uh, Nintendo stuff here. Um, with the exclusion of this game, um, very cool, a game for the Wonder Swan Color, um, which is a system that I like a lot, but even in Japan, it's kind of hard to collect for. Uh, Wonder Swan games don't just pop up everywhere, so I saw this one. I had to get it. It's a copy of Guilty Gear Petite, which is an awesome title. Um, it is a chibi Guilty Gear game uh, in the same vein as Pocket Fighter, and it's really cool. I love the Guilty Gear series, and this is a really interesting title from that series to have in my collection, Guilty Gear Petite. Um, two Famicom games. First up, um, this is the uh, Tecmo Pro Wrestling game. Uh, this got a release in the U.S. I used to play it quite a bit with my cousins. Um, just a fun 8-bit wrestling game. Uh, the English title I'm pretty sure is just Tecmo Pro Wrestling. Uh, I could be wrong, uh, but good game. And then I also picked up a copy of Wrecking Crew, which is really cool. This is more or less the, I don't know if you want to call it the Second Mario game. Uh, this is the game that followed Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr., where Mario is, again, like a construction worker, only this time he's demolishing buildings and uh, avoiding little creatures that want to kill him still. I guess they probably live in the building and Mario is destroying their home. Mario used to be a prick actually. He used to capture apes and demolish buildings. What a what a dick he used to be. Thank God he switched to plumbing. Became a nice guy saving princesses and all. Some Super Famicom goodness. This first game simply titled Ultraman uh, not a great game, but one I had to have anyway. This is a 1990 release, so it's one of the first Super Famicom games. I um, mean, it's published by Bandai. Uh, what's really cool is Bandai games, if you can see it, there's a 01, a 01 up here. Um, they numbered their games in order of release, kind of like you would number comic books. So this is number one. Uh, Ultraman, and I've got a bunch more uh, lying around. But Ultraman, um, pretty cool to have. Here we have Far East of Eden Zero. This is a Far East of Eden game, not really connected with the others in the series, kind of like the way 4 is kind of its own thing. This one is also kind of its own thing. Um, I, at first I thought the guy on the cover was supposed to be a younger version of Kabuki, uh, but apparently not. He just kind of looks a lot like him. Far East of Eden Zero. Pretty cool game. This one, I was so happy to find. Been looking for it forever. Could never find it for a price I wanted to pay. Uh, the Super Famicom re-release of Dragon Quest III. Um, this is an excellent game, Dragon Quest III, um, but with some improved graphics and sound. Uh, especially this really cool opening cutscene um, showing this, you know, like this famed like ancient warrior fighting this demon at the mouth of a volcano. Really cool. Uh, Dragon Quest 3 on Super Famicom, really awesome. This game, another one I had been on my wish list forever. Um, it's a shoot 'em up. It's Macross Scrambled Valkyrie. Um, great game, uh, really good graphics, uh, great sound design, uh, really fun. Three different characters to choose from. Each character has three different modes to cycle between, and they all have different. Uh, types of shot. No one character shares the same um, shot type as the other characters. So a lot of variety. A uh, very fun game. Macross Scrambled Valkyrie. And then this one, a game in one of my favorite series ever. This is Shodai Niketsu Koha Kunio-kun. Um, if you like, you can call this a sequel to River City Ransom. Um, the characters in that game, Kunio and his friends, go on a like a school trip to Osaka, and then they just get into a lot of skirmishes with gangs and punks in Osaka, 
and it's it's really cool. Uh, every game in the Kunio series I enjoy. So, uh, Shodai Niketsu Koha Kunio Kun, very cool. And then we have some GameCube games here. Uh, first up, the Sonic Mega Collection, which has like seven or eight games on it. Um, all the classic Sonic games, uh, to include Spinball, 3D Blast, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles. Um, really cool collection on the GameCube, the Mega Collection. Here we have, and let me read the full title, it's Bleach GC, and it's Tasogare Tasu, E. God damn it. I'm gonna get it. Tasugare Ima Mieru. Shinigami. There you go. Tasu, tasugare ni ma mieru. <laughs> Forgive my shitty Japanese right now. It's a Bleach fighting game on the GameCube. It's pretty cool. Graphics are great. I don't know shit about Bleach, um, but the games are pretty fun. I've never seen an episode, never read the manga, but the games are okay. Speaking of which, here we have a copy of Naruto. Gekito Ninja Tyson 3. See, I got that one. See, I'm not totally illiterate. Um, so, another Naruto fighting game. This is another series where I've never watched the anime, don't really know anything at all about it, but I enjoy the games. They're pretty cool. So, Naruto uh, 3 on the GameCube. Really great RPG right here by Namco, Tales of Symphonia. Um, I really like the Tell series. I have quite a number of games in that series. Um, they're all good. They don't disappoint. They're fun RPGs. I really like the battle systems and uh, not much else to say. Uh, Tells of Symphonia is a really good one in that series. And then here we have the GameCube version of Biohazard Code Veronica. Um, this is about where the, uh, the series lost me. Code Veronica 4 that's kind of where I lost my interest. Um, but this is a very good one. It's good on the Dreamcast and it's good on the GameCube and PS2. Whatever it was released on. It's a good game. Biohazard Code Veronica. And that's a whole bunch of Nintendo stuff. Okay, uh, PlayStation and PlayStation 2. Found some really good stuff uh, recently. Uh, this game. I really like, this is, let me read it, Nimpu Sentai Hurricaneja. Um, this is a Power Rangers game. Uh, it is, um, the name escapes me, it was the Power Rangers Ninja one. I think it might have been called Ninja Storm. Um, this is an excellent game. It's a 3D beat-em-up. It's got full motion video clips from the, the Sentai show, which is awesome. I do like Sentai in a very corny, cheesy way. Um, it's a beat em up, but it's got other. The gameplay shifts between when you're doing the beat em up or when you're a giant and you're fighting the monsters, the perspectives and camera angles and, and gameplay style, and it just the controls change throughout the game. Um, just a really fun game, a lot of variety, and very cool. Uh, Ninpu Sentai Hurricaneer. Very cool. Uh, this game, one I've been looking for for a little while. Uh, a series I really like. I like collecting the games in this series. This is Ranma One Half Battle Renaissance. This is the first and only 3D Ranma game, and it's I think the last Ranma game that was ever made. Um, the only one on the PlayStation. Um, it's a 3D fighter. It's definitely no Tekken, but it's enjoyable. I think the fact that just it's a Ranma game, and Ranma is a really cool kind of fun anime. Uh, if you follow the series at all, or and, you know, it's just like any other anime-based game where it's harder to find the flaws in it when you're a fan of the uh, source material. So this, I can admit, is not a great game, but it's still pretty cool. Ranma One Half Battle Renaissance, very cool. This game, I love. Um, here it's called Clayman Clayman, um, known elsewhere as The Neverhood. Uh, the Neverhood is a game designed by Doug Tenaple, the creator of Earthworm Jim, one of my favorite uh, couple of games of all time. Uh, the Neverhood, very cool kind of point-and-click puzzle game um, with an all clay, like claymation graphics. It's, it's very cool, very unique, 
Um, a lot of fun, fantastic soundtrack, and very just all around a very interesting, uh, fun game. Uh, the Neverhood. If you've never played The Neverhood, I don't know if it got any console releases uh, anywhere else. Um, this is the only. I didn't know it was on PlayStation until I found it here. It was a PC game uh, in the United States. I had played it on PC, but uh, I, when I found the PlayStation version, I was very happy. Uh, the Neverhood, check it out. It's uh, very, very cool. Uh, this game, a Street Fighter game, uh, one of the much more obscure Street Fighter games. It's simply titled Street Fighter 2 Movie. Um, when I first saw just the side and it said Street Fighter 2 Movie, I was like, Wait, is this the game they made? You know, based on the you know Street Fighter live action film with all the digitized characters. No, this is a game based on the Street Fighter 2 anime, the uh, animated film, which is very good. Um, but basically, what this game is, it's an FMV game where you play from the perspective of one of Shadow Law's kind of um, weird cyborg robot guys that watches the fighters and collects data on them. So basically, you're watching the game from the perspective of one of these robots, and you're watching like the fight scenes and all that stuff from the movie. And as these fight scenes play out, when a character does a signature move or lands an attack, you're supposed to hit the button at the right time to capture that attack data to build up the stats for the robot. And then at the end of the game, you fight with Ryu. So you're the robot and you fight Ryu. And the better you did, the better your stats will be and the better the character will control and the more powerful the strikes will be. So it's an FMV Street Fighter game where eventually you fight Ryu. You can only play as one character and you can only fight one character and the rest of the time you're just watching the movie. Uh, interesting, not terribly fun as a game, but Interesting to have in a, a Street Fighter fan's collection. Street Fighter 2 movie. Pretty cool. And then this last PS1 game, one I was really, really happy to find. Uh, Japanese title is Tron Ni Gobun. Um, known in the States and elsewhere, I assume, as The Misadventures of Tron Bon. This is in the Mega Man Legends series where you play as the villain Tron Bon. Uh, going around blowing shit up and stealing people's money and fighting the cops in your mech with all your cool little surf bot guys It's awesome. I, I really love the uh, Tron Bond game really cool uh, These next three games. I'm gonna show them all together just because I Just love the colors just the colors coming off these covers are just like amazing It's just this weird rainbow effect um, all three of these games are based on anime uh, as far as I know the first one is Meru Heaven Arm Fight Dream. Uh, this is a 3D fighter. I've never heard of this anime before. I picked this game up purely on the cover art and the pictures on the back, and it's made by Konami. I figured it couldn't be that bad, and it's not. It's a pretty cool fighting game. Next up is Kinikuman Muscle Grand Prix Max. This is a Kinikuman or uh, Ultimate Muscle. A uh, fighting game, actually. Not so much a wrestling game like the Generations one was, but more of a fighting game and very cool and uh, just an intro that is mind blowing. Awesome. I love the Kanikuman theme song. I might actually throw that in at the beginning of this video. Did I? You tell me. Um, and then this last one is Beat the Vandal Buster Darkness Century, which is basically a hack and slash action adventure game based on Beat the Vandal Buster, another, another uh, series I'm pretty sure of manga and anime that I've never read, never seen before, but the game turns out to be pretty cool. Beat the Vandal Buster, I like it. And then this game I really like a lot as well, Gungrave. Uh, this did eventually have an anime made after it. Um, I like this game just because it's mindless fun. Put it in, do a level or two, just blowing everything and everybody away and then you're done. Um, cool looking game, I love the graphics, cool cell shaded style, and an excellent soundtrack. Gungrave, and I like Gungrave too as well. Uh, this, another game based on a anime series, this is Ikito Sin Shining Dragon. Um, Ikito Sin, pretty 
popular series of manga and anime, I guess. A lot of chicks with huge tits in high school beating the shit out of each other. Who wouldn't like that? So this is a beat em up slash fighting game with lots of bouncing boobs. And it's, it's fun enough, it's pretty cool, and then this deluxe version came with I, probably a soundtrack they, they typically do. Uh, yes! Came with a soundtrack. Um, I, I forget shit like that sometimes. But uh, Ikito Sen, Shining Dragon. Uh, pretty cool game for the PS2. And then this last thing here, really very cool. Even though it's a series I'm not really into anymore. Um, it says uh, 1987 to 2007. This is the Metal Gear Solid collection. Um, what is on this, or in this collection is... Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, the document of Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. Um, it is... Can I get that shot there? You know what? I'll take the opposite route. There we go. Um, it is a pretty cool collection. So I can pop that off there, and whatever the hell this is. So all the discs are housed in here. Here's this pretty cool Kojima logo. Excuse me. Doesn't necessarily want to stand so well. And this is, oh, it's still factory sealed actually. It is Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops for the PSP. Still sealed. I'm not going to open it. I don't even have a PSP. Um, so that's going to remain sealed. And then if I open this up, this is where all the discs are housed. Pretty damn cool. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not a huge uh, Metal Gear Solid fan. I actually haven't really been a fan since the first Metal Gear Solid. Um, but when I saw this, and they weren't asking very much for it, I, I figured I might as well get it. It's a pretty cool collection of games. Um, anyway, that's what I got as far as PlayStation and PlayStation 2 games. Alright, so a bit of a mix here. I got PC Engine and then a bunch of Sega stuff underneath that. Uh, first game here is called uh, Cybercross. Um, this is kind of a side-scrolling beat-em-up action game, and it's very Power Rangers-esque. You start out as a normal guy, but then when you uh, collect a power-up, you can transform into this Power Rangers type guy. And actually, you collect a different colored power-up, you turn into a different colored uh, Sentai, and you have different powers, so it's pretty cool, Cybercross. Um, Silent Debuggers. This is kind of um, a dungeon crawling RPG style where it's first person, but it's a, sh a shooter. So it's, in a sense, a first person shooter. Um, when you encounter enemies, you can kind of pull up a reticle on screen and shoot the enemies. So a very kind of primitive precursor to first person shooters. Uh, again, that's Silent Debuggers. Pretty cool. Uh, this one is, uh, I believe the translation is Spiritual Warrior Wataru. This came out in the States as Keith Courage in Alpha Zones. Um, I like the design of this cover a lot better than the uh, US Keith Courage cover. Um, pretty cool game, uh, really fun action platform. Actually came with TurboGrafx-16s, I believe, in the States. Um, for the PC Engine CD, uh, 2D fighter called Flash Hiders. Uh, pretty cool 2D fighters on the PC Engine. It's weird, it's kind of like playing them on the on the Mega Drive or something, you know, you don't really have a whole lot of buttons to work with, but still pretty fun, Flash Hiders. And then here we have a really great game, East for the Dawn of East. This kind of goes back to that traditional East style of gameplay where you're kind of, you really run into the enemies and kill them as opposed to Part 3, which was like a side-scrolling action game. Uh, East 4, very cool. Um, this one game for the Dreamcast, one I'd wanted for a long time, never could find it for some odd reason, uh, love this game. It's 18-wheeler American Pro Trucker. Uh, I don't know what to say, I love this game in the same way that I love Crazy Taxi. Just, these are very simple, fun driving games. Love it. 18-wheeler. Check it out. Um, here we have, and let me read the title. It's Ranma One Half Byakuran Aika. This is uh, for the Mega CD. It's Ranma One Half, and it's kind of, for the most part, played out in the visual novel style. But you do get into fights, and when you're in battle, it's a rock paper scissors setup. So 
the outcomes of the battles in this game, totally random chance. You're just picking one of three options. But uh, round roll one half, again, it's a series I like. I try to pick up any game I can find for it. Here we have Jikyo Oshaberi Parodius Forever with me. Um, I had the PlayStation version already, found the Saturn version, of course I'm going to get it. Uh, 2D games are always better on the Saturn. Um, just a fun, parodious game. Really like this series. Check that out. Um, this game is magnificent. Really love it. It's Princess Crown for the Saturn. If you've ever played Odin Sphere, uh, this is kind of a precursor to Odin Sphere. Same graphic style, same gameplay style. Really fun, beautiful game to look at, and great soundtrack. Princess Crown, check it out. And then Mega Drive games. First up, we got a copy of Surging Aura. This is a... It's not so much a turn-based RPG, really, because once your meter builds up in battle, you can attack at will. Um, but it is an RPG, uh, pretty fun. Uh, the graphics, at least at first, really reminded me of Fantasy Star. Um, but it's a fun enough game, good graphics, decent soundtrack as well. Again, that's Surging Aura. Very cool. Uh, here we have a game I like a lot. It's Crayon Shin-Chan, based on the animated series. Um, not a not a platformer, not an action game. It's it's hard to describe this game. You're a little kid walking around your neighborhood trying to avoid the other kids so you can collect some cards lying around all over the neighborhood. I don't know. Weird but cool. Crayon Shin Chan, very cool. Uh, here I I've picked up a copy of Eternal Champions. This is actually my first opportunity to play this game, and I actually like it. I played it on the six button. Mega Drive controller, and it's not bad. I expected it to be shit like a lot of the Mortal Kombat knockoffs, but it's not. The controls are actually pretty good. It feels like they were trying to find a middle ground between Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Um, I expected to hate this game, and I don't. Uh, it's not bad, actually. Eternal Champions. And then these next two games, um, games that I've wanted for a really, really long time, Excellent games. They both shoot 'em ups. They are Battle Mania and Battle Mania Daiginjo. Is it Daigin or Daikin? Daiginjo. I was right. So the two Battle Mania games, uh, side-scrolling shoot 'em ups, where you play basically two young women flying through the air. Um, one, well, in the first one, basically your main character faces in one direction and then you can change the direction that the other girl is facing to shoot behind you and in front of you. Um, the first one got a release in the US as Troubleshooters, um, which makes sense. The organization they belong to is called Troubleshooters, but the name Battle Mania, the reason that makes sense is in the English version of this game, I believe the girl's name is Miranda, but her name in the Japanese version is Mania, so they call the game Battle Mania and that's pretty cool. So the first game, really cool. The second game, even better. Um, in, better in the graphics department, uh, more fleshed out story, um, which the stories in these games are really fun. Almost reminds me of like Dirty Pair or something, that anime series. And you can also change up the control scheme in this game quite a lot. You can change it to where your character, your main character, Mania, either shoots in one direction or you can have her shoot in like eight multi-direction, kind of like uh, Forgotten Worlds. And then you can also choose the same kind of thing with your uh, extra option. You can choose the way you control that as well. So a lot of options for control in this game. Um, two really fantastic games. Um, they're very expensive though, um, so I would recommend uh, maybe emulating them to give them a try. They really are just fantastic shoot 'em ups I can't speak highly enough of them. The Battle Mania games, check them out. And that's some um, PC Engine and Sega stuff that I picked up recently. Okay, so Xbox 360. Uh, recently um, picked up a Japanese 360. Don't know why I hadn't before, but I saw it in the same hard off that they were selling a bunch of really cool shoot 'em ups so I bought it all in one and uh, very happy with it. Um, Japanese 360 games, just really beautiful looking artwork on some of these. You don't, I don't recall seeing a lot of this in the States. Um, first thing I picked up was this special edition of Arcana Heart 3. Uh, this one actually developed by Arc System Works. 
Uh, same developer as Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue, Hokuto no Ken, all kinds of really great fighting games. So Arcana Heart 3 is a special edition. What the hell did it come with? Um, it comes with like a handkerchief and a soundtrack and art books. This just a really uh, stacked special edition. Arcana Heart 3, uh, very cool, uh, uh, excellent 2D fighter. Again, developed by Arc System Works, the masters of uh, modern 2D fighting. Okay, now the rest of these games are all shoot 'em ups. They're all made by Cave, except for one. Uh, this game, Odometius Excellent. I love this game. Um, such an awesome throwback to Gradius and Parodius, uh, both of those series. Um, really fun game, really colorful, just fun to look at, really quirky and crazy like the Parodius series. Uh, really fun, lighthearted soundtrack. Uh, can't say enough good things about Odometius Excellent. Very good game. This, I got a special edition. It's Espgaluda 2. Black Label, um, so it's a bullet hell shooter by Cave, and it also came with a pretty cool uh, faceplate for a 360. Um, so yeah, really cool. Uh, love picking up these special editions for the 360 now. I'm definitely going to try to do a lot more of that. So Escaluta 2, Black Label, really cool. Uh, this next one, and I always forget the full title, it's Dodon Pachi. Bum 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 bum. Dodan Pachi Daifukatsu. Black Label. Another Dodan Pachi game. Again, a game. This is developed by Cave. Uh, initially, uh, Don Pachi and Dodan Pachi. Who was it? Taito that developed I can't remember who developed them. But uh, this one, developed by Cave. Really fun, really awesome, fast paced, very difficult bullet hell shooter, um, which is what I'm really getting into uh, recently. Um, Dodon Pachi, uh, Black Label, really cool. Uh, this next one, good lord, have I been having fun with this. It's two games in one. It's Muchi Muchi Pork and Pink Sweets. And this is another uh, special edition that came with a CD soundtrack for both games. Uh, very cool. I especially love uh, Muchi Muchi Pork. Uh, fun, difficult shoot 'em up, and just so colorful and just fun to look at and just a really upbeat awesome soundtrack um, these games are just pure fun um, if you can find these I know they released uh, region free uh, versions of a lot of these shoot 'em ups so if you can find this one I'm pretty sure they did release it uh, Muchi Muchi Pork and Pink Sweets do yourself a favor and get it it's awesome love both of those games here we have a copy of Mushihime Sama uh, this is Another awesome top-down bullet hell shooter by Cave um, with a kind of a nature theme for the most part. You're just killing a whole shit ton of insects. Again, difficult, uh, fun, uh, really good looking, really great soundtrack. Uh, can't speak highly enough of these Cave shooters, Mushihime-sama. And this is another special edition that came with a soundtrack, which is excellent because all of these uh, games have terrific soundtracks. And then these last two... Um, potentially my two favorite shooters by Cave. Um, not their most difficult, but really, really fun. So here we have uh, special edition Death Smiles. Uh, came with a CD soundtrack. Really cool. And then we have a copy of Death Smiles 2 Makai no Merry Christmas. So Death Smiles 2 is a Christmas themed uh, Death Smiles game, complete with uh, demonic Santa Claus and giant evil reindeer and uh, really really cool stuff like that the Death Smiles games I really love they're so much fun um, they can be difficult um, they're definitely not as difficult as some of these over here um, but they can be challenging um, my first time playing Death Smiles though I played it in the arcade and I made it all the way to the bonus stage the second to last stage on one credit so not impossible um, but still challenging and still extremely fun games Death Smiles and Death Smiles 2 uh, really awesome and that will conclude this uh, pickups video I uh, hope you all saw some games you really liked do let me know in the comments uh, what you thought um, quick little ending note here um, hopefully by early September 
I will be moved into my new home in Texas and hopefully by September 20th and 21st I think it is um, I'll be able to head out to Retro Palooza uh, that should be pretty cool I'm hoping to meet up with some some people there so if you're gonna be there uh, do let me know um, I would very much like to meet some like-minded youtubers out there I might even bring a few things with me uh, maybe not necessarily to sell or trade but maybe just to to share with people um, but that's it uh, that's the end of this video thank you for watching uh, liking commenting subscribing whatever it is you feel you would like to do thank you so much uh, cheers uh, that's all. I'll see you next time.